All right, here we go. Greetings, greetings, market rebels. Welcome to this week's macro measure. I'm Wayne. My partner Ryan's working on the market outlook overview. It's just a little bit in front of quarter after two here on the East Coast, Sunday, March 12th, 2023. Let's get cranking because maybe the wildest week we've had in a long time to even discuss. Here's our trusty disclaimer. Intellectual property rights notice. Appreciate if you could have a look at that and then we'll flash the plan program. I'll let this stay up there, but boy, you know, we all know it was quite a week. Uh, and what we discussed before, we'll try to remember to discuss, but there's so much going on that I've literally been doing prep for this for three hours. And uh, I just decided I better start recording it before I needed to uh, factor in even more data <laughs> when we open up on Monday morning. So Better get going on it. But this is what we're going to do. Um, we, we talked about 408, thinking it would make it up there. Fell a little shy. Uh, all the major index ETFs got rocked. IWM, we've spotted that a few days early on. It was leading things lower. And eventually, it kind of paved the way, it seemed, uh, for other major index ETFs to finally come under pressure. Remarkably, the VIX finally got off the mat and really surged. Finally, that's been something. Clearly, right, the financials were the epicenter. Uh, and as we noted in Thursday's webinar, uh, they've been the catalyst for market routes many times over in the past, uh, in my experience, and I'm sure really historically. Uh, and we had a long discussion about that uh, in terms of UOA appearing and in terms of that history and that factor. And so part of that discussion on Thursday morning was about uh, the fact that, A, uh, we did start to see some UOA show up late last week into early parts of this week in the financials and various financials, and they were not acting well, the financials overall. And uh, that's been something I've always kept my eyes on because I was, I was, uh, I had that suggested to me uh, many, maybe like 25 plus years ago by a very long time market watcher who ran an office for Wheat First Butcher Singer. He was the father of my, one of my partners at the time. And uh, he was a great, you know, great technician, had so much history. And he shared that with me. Uh, it's no, not a big secret or anything, but that really got me started on making sure I kept an eye on the financials ever since. And so when I saw the UOA picking up in that space, Right, you've got the potential problems developing. Right, we we we've known that with Silvergate and even before that, and all these different things that have been transpiring. Uh, and so I knew to watch for it. And I knew that eventually it could spill over into the market. And we were discussing that and all those various aspects that could matter, thinking it would be maybe in the near future, but not literally later that day. So literally, literally later that day, all hell broke loose and. Uh, we started to see the, the things really getting rocked. And then, of course, Friday, it, it became worse as well. So uh, there's the market being the market, right? You are talking about something in your mind that is maybe like a few days to a week out, maybe longer. And then within hours, right, they, it starts to occur. And, you know, that's, again, you, you, the market being the market. You just never know when that rug pull is going to come. But um, from there, the UOA fanned out. These are things we like to see the UOA fan out the way that it did have a catalyst, have poor action on the charts. These are the things I really like to look for. Ryan likes to look for. And then we got what we got. Uh, we can take a quick look today at the sector view on our 12 our twelve sectors we keep. Uh, we'll take a look at the TNX. I'll have all these like, I'll have all these notes off to the side. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about this along the way to pivot. And again, I think that becomes a careful what you wish for thing. Uh, we'll talk about the other things uh, that I note there in terms of the concerning situation that's developed virtually everywhere. We should just sum it up that way. And that the second test the spies had of the bear market downtrend line was a fail, straight up. So that bull trap that we've been discussing for a while goes back. That discussion goes back a while once we busted above the uh, bear market downtrend line. And we were hoping for them to do even a little more work to the upside, but to this point, it hasn't materialized. So you can only you can only get what they'll let you have. And we didn't get the super duper maybe version of the bull trap, but we may have gotten a bull trap that was pretty maybe pretty convincing. As I've noted many times, I think a lot of money really got poured into this market, despite 
the sentiment really being very bearish. So it just, I think there were some true believers that really went in there thinking it's over because of different developments and the story that was being sold. And unfortunately, I think maybe this time around, what kept us from being true believers in it was our macro take on things. But again, we would still trade the predominant, mainly short and intermediate term trends to try to uh, do the best in, in that rising market, which is what we tried to do. But here's that next slide that the prior slide alluded to. And this is something that Ryan has included in the market overview for some time. We've talked about it many times over the last, it could even be honestly, nine months, maybe even longer, maybe six months. I can't remember when we first started talking about this, but this is really the situation where you start to get the Fed cutting rates and they cut these rates. That's the pivot everyone's been hoping for, that the Fed would ease off raising sooner, things would level off and then Fed rate cuts would be on the way when they started to see some of the data materialize. Well, this is to be careful what you wish for, because you'll note on here on this graphic that just after the vertical green lines, when they start to cut the rate, start to cut rates, you can see the performance of the Wilshire 5000, right? The, the market gets hit and hit pretty darn hard. So again, that hasn't happened yet, but if this situation sort of forces that, and then this applies potentially again, right? You all know what that, that portends. So we'll see, but we, what we'll do now is we'll go back to this slide and I'm going to stop sharing briefly and then I'll move things around so we can get into a quick view of the charts and then keep an eye on where we're trying to go because there's just so much right now for me to potentially uh, discuss. There's just so much for me to discuss. So it's just a remarkable, this is a remarkable development. We haven't had something I think like this in a little while, but in the all the years of market rebellion, we certainly have had something like this. This, this has been an amazing four to five years of trading. And uh, as we've noted before, the uh, the fact that there's still an incredible amount of opportunity, which I'll share some of, if you're willing to just trade, if you're willing to say, look, this is the predominant momentum situation or trend right now, I'm going to uh, go with it, embrace it. And that includes trading to the downside. And so I'll try to show some of that. But this is what I was getting at in terms of the 12 sectors, our basic 12 sector grid. I do other ones, of course, in sector situation, but that'll be short this week because it right, it just became a risk off, which is what we alluded to. That that's where we're at in terms, not sector situation. This one, that's where that's where things really ended up. So let me move this over so I have my notes. I've got various notes made because I know. There's very little chance I'll have it. I'll be able to remember everything I, I would like to note for everyone. But you can just see it. I mean, I don't really need to go through it. Uh, you can see that we, in some cases, like XLF, you became oversold. You're at 22 on the RSI. Real estate, this is one that's kind of left us scratching our head at times. But, you know, we noted that uh, you may be breaking down there. And they put that little attempt to rally back up towards trend. That failed, rolled over. Uh, these are a couple of highlights I could make. Even defensive sectors. Uh, like uh, uh, the healthcare uh, XLV that also rolled over. So everything, even defensive things like utilities and XLP, the staples. Now th these, those in uh, healthcare hung in there, but you know, bottom line is they. Pretty, you can see across the board they sold everything off, and that's what I was getting to. So pretty much everything got battered, and even things like there were. You know, you'd expect this to happen though. When the whole market kind of goes risk off, right? They even sell things that were were looking really good, and industrials had been looking really good. But that's what happens. This is exactly why, especially if you're new to market rebellion, this is exactly why we always insist on reminding people that you've got to keep your eye on more than just your stock. You really should keep your eye on the sector. You should really keep your eye on obviously the major index ETFs. And you should keep your eye on other things like the VIX, like the dollar DXY on, on Thinkorswim as the symbol, the TNX, to see what's going on in the market because it's not, it's it's more complicated, in my opinion, than just this isolated situation in your stock. If you're trading just for minutes, it's it's maybe a different story, but I'm talking about people that 
swing and intermediate term trade mainly. But that became, you can see the risk off happened there. Uh, you can also see if I can get this right here is the regional uh, banking ETF. And I wanted to get this ETF in. So what I do in UOA Pro, just so everyone knows that's not in there, I try to bring as much of a balance. I don't want all high beta, right? Even though we know that that can really deliver, you know, the most. But I want to have opportunities for people with different size accounts, different aims. And that's what Ryan and I really talked about when we launched it several years ago. And so not everything is a major score in terms of, uh, you know, hey, there's a big development here. Uh, and now, you know, we're, we're going to only pick these stocks. It's not that way. Plus, we're dependent on whatever UOA comes in through the, through the software, right, through the filters, through our UOA analyst team. But I wanted to get this one in and I was working on other ones that turned out to be good. So it's not the end of the world. But this was one I really wanted to get in as an ETF, kind of, you know, more of something that people that like ETFs could trade. But I uh, couldn't. Fortunately, you know, a lot of the individual financial names that I put in in lieu of this, right, uh, worked out as well, if not better. Uh, you, again, you can't you can't win them all you, because you can't get into them all. Right. When especially when the market's going haywire like it was. But you can see, you know, this is obviously a lot worse than even the XLF. Uh, this is the XLF fell last week, but excuse me, this ETF really, really got rocked as you would expect. And another way that I can maybe show a little bit about that would be, uh, might be here. So let me just jump ahead to, uh, let's see here. No, that's not what I wanted to help out. I could have sworn. Well, this was something that I had. That we can try to get to this, but I really wanted to. Uh, let me get right into the service here, uh, and you'll see that we had names like Schwab. I'll, I'll cover this a little bit more. We had Schwab. Uh, that was really a, a good mover, really tremendous mover. Uh, there were many other financials. But what I wanted to note was how powerful the UOA was just in general. So because, again, the, the goal of UOA Pro is to whittle down all the hits that, that for folks that don't have time to watch stuff all day and analyze things all day, which is what, you know, which is what I do. Uh, and it's just just take a look, though, right at the at the number of hits that came in on Friday. I'll just keep scrolling and you'll just see how many, just ballparking it, right? There's just so many hits. And of course, I try to keep things balanced as when it's when possible and when I think it's appropriate for bull and bear. But the, the, the second half of last week tilted dramatically towards the bear side because you could see the activity that was in there. And so we had, good news is we had a lot of a good put side ideas, I think in place, that were in these ETFs. So uh, let's do, oh, you know what? I think I can just do it here. Uh, just do ETF here instead. Oops, ETF. And then you'll see this, uh, but this should show some of those major ETFs. And you could see like, you could see all the paper that came in. I, I was updating our IWM bearish idea a lot. The spiders bearish idea the QQQ bearish idea. We had other ones as well that were, we had VNQ, HYG, uh, FEZ. I had that one in there. Uh, it's It was uh, a remarkable, remarkable situation in the major index ETF. So I think that folks should have done really well in there. And then if I bring up financial, you'll just see how much paper there was. And we had names, uh, we had many, many names naturally Right when you see almost like that alignment of everything, right? The harmonic convergence, as they called it like 30 years ago, of whatever, uh, of all the planets. But you can see there was so much paper, and we were fortunate enough to get in a lot of these. I think almost all of those, except for KRE, we were in. I don't think I have managed to get Morgan Stanley in. BX were in. I'll show that. AGNC, we were in. Ally, we were in. Could, I don't think I was able to get Key in in time. Uh, we were in ARC as a bear, uh, but you could get you get the idea. So it was very powerful. And when when UOA is that powerful and there's a driver, uh, you can get great moves, which you know I'll show maybe a little bit later. But the reason I wanted to come here 
was because mainly because of this right here. Uh, you can see that the, the the major move that we had in uh, in the, the, the rates, there was a massive drop there. We come back over here. We can take a look at the yield on the 10 year as well, just to kind of throw a few at you. And the TNX really backed up uh, from midweek on. We can see it. Come on, think or swim. Come on. All right, there you go. Uh, you can see that was a pretty darn big drop there. Now, how big is the drop? You may be wondering, is that really big or whatever? But uh, let's get a little perspective on that because I think it's this one. Is it this one? Nope. So it's this one here. So this is the two-day move in the U.S. two-year yield that I think Jim Bianco put out. And this is one of your five or six top swoons, even though it doesn't look like it up here. This is one of the top two-day swoons that you've had since the mid-80s or maybe even early 80s. So that just gives you an idea on, on how much things shifted to a more defensive posture in very short in a very short period of time. Here's just another view while we're at it in terms of the, the situation where the Fed rates start coming down, which is the dotted line, and you're either in a recession or you're about to go into a recession. And so that's obviously pretty interesting if if uh if again the past is prologue um if we start because things are really rocked on that uh you've got some i don't know if it'll let me do it here i might be able to go over to analyze and economic data and then let's see if i can do 10 let's see what comes up yeah so it might let us do this but here's the old 10 year minus the two year uh, and you can see where that is. So I don't show this that all. Well, actually, can you? Is it giving me the updated time frame there? It, it, actually, it is. Okay. So yeah, you can see, I mean, this is substantial. So there could be other reasons for this. I don't want to act as though, hey, that's a lock. But And I don't know all the particulars. This isn't a market that I can do what I do for Market Rebellion and also keep incredibly close tabs on what's happening in the yield curve all day. But Bottom line is that this is something that is historic. So gives you that idea of uh, where, you know, where we are. Uh, so that's pretty strong stuff right there. Now, let's see one more thing from here. I mean, we might have to, yeah, we might have to get back into. So uh, where's this? Oh, I wanted to cover this. So this is hard to see right now, but just trying to give you some perspective. Uh, this is the new 52-week uh, lows made in, in NASDAQ. And it's it's hard to see, unfortunately. But this, because it's you're just getting like a, you know, you're just kind of getting a dot out of it. But there was a real surge in new lows is the point. Uh, it's not, not easy to see. And then some of the things we've been waiting on, we, we've gone through the percent above the 20 day, stocks above 20, above 50, above the 200. These have really corrected, right? So I just want to flash that because it's something we've kept our eyes on this as well. Uh, and then finally, it will be the two. So the 200. So there's been a big, big, big pullback in these. Could it keep going? Sure. But I mean, it's it's definitely way, way off. So obviously, there's been a big correction. There's been big destruction to the market. Just check out where we are now from where we were. Right. Just think of one month ago, you were almost into extreme greed. Now you're already at extreme fear. So the timeline might be worth a view just to show right, how far we've fallen. So at the end of that run um, that we had, there you go. You're, you've got about, what, five, six weeks of time, and it's really gotten battered, really battered. So another view on it we've checked out is this one here, right? And so now this is really swung towards fear as well, this alternative. I'll just note this because we're here, may as well uh, crack all the way through these, but this analog was working relatively well. Uh, this third year, we've talked about it, of the presidential cycle, we've talked about it many times. And it was on its way to start things out in March. But this clearly, this is another example of where news developments are going to overwhelm charts, change complexions dramatically. So that's now uh, been, uh, been kind of thrown off course, if you will. We'll see if we can get back on course. I'm clearly having my doubts now, for sure. I'm sure a lot of us do. Uh, here's another look. Surprisingly to me, um, I thought that they might, I know this maybe backed off somewhat, but they still have rates up 
a decent amount uh, over the balance of this year. You, know, you can check this out many different ways, but they still have rates going up. Probably the probabilities are skewed towards these two, right? And so uh, that's where it is. Now, things change dramatically here because if you look at where you were one month ago uh, or one day ago, right, you could see how much everything really shifted uh, towards the rates. Now, I'm not sure what caused this. Again, this is not something I can, I can watch or check into all day, unfortunately. So just, just to give you an idea though, there's, there were some shifts. Uh, this, I'm actually just using this, our normal little helper that we've got for market cap. And um, I just wanted to note that some of these did start to finally give it up a little bit, Apple, Microsoft, uh, but NVIDIA and uh, let's see, Meta, they hung in there pretty well. But overall, if you look at the top 20, let's say, you could see that things got rough in these as well. Maybe not Apple and Microsoft as much, but you can just see it all the way down through all these bigger names that they came, they came pretty much after everything and smashed them pretty hard there. So it wasn't as if, you know, just it was really exactly what we talked about in, in the webinar on Thursday, excuse me. It was a case of, you know, the financials causing that problem. And then that perception fans out and it just, you know, it's a self uh, feeding situation. So uh, where it goes from here, I don't know. That, that, that's I, I, my message for the week would be volatility, right? I, I just can't imagine things settling down. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, obviously, but just, I just don't see how things settle down very easy. Um, somehow, you know, the Fed, Atlanta Fed still has the G GDP now up here. So I don't know if this will be more uh, more tricks, what's going to come in there. Uh, this is not, the, the blue chip consensus is at odds. You can see there's a pretty big disparity there. So we will see uh, what happens. We will see what happens not too far for, uh, from now in the future, maybe like a month and a half or something about this first quarter. But with the way that the, I guess the jobs data showed up, um, now there seems like people are thinking, okay, well, that means there could be, things could be softened or there could be a pivot. Uh, so I think I'll come back to these, but I'll just show, I'll just show some of these in a little while, but just to give you an idea on how dramatic the, the movement is and how much, I think there's a lot of opportunity in both directions at times. And this time it was on the downside. So we'll just take a look at those maybe to wrap things up. But I want to get into the charts specifically, start looking at SPY. Obviously, I looked at it a little bit earlier, but like I said, I had to really get things started to be able to, uh, wrong wrong view, just too much stuff on there. So uh, I had to get things started with a quick review, but it took me hours because I think there's just so much, there's so much happening. But uh, let's go back, to kind of recap quickly bear market downtrend line, kind of in that pinkish purple line I just highlighted there. And we were willing to give them the benefit of the doubt as long as they were up there uh, above it and holding it. And it seemed like right last week, they were able to test it and produce this big, this big move. Now, I think that that had to do with, again, bringing in fresh shorts, having some people capitulate down here. Uh, also, I think it had to do with so many people being bearish and I also think it had to do with zero DTE and of course our friends and how they can whip things around uh, on or near expiration. I thought they would probably work this back up into here. And then we'd have to start start to see, we talked about if it backs off, you know, there were a lot of SMAs and so on and so forth that you could see where they would, you would expect there to be support, but it fell 55 cents shy of 408. Now I'm not a big stickler. We talk about, uh, a broad magic marker rather than a mechanical pencil in terms of pinpointing your your levels uh we would rather be uh in the hey if it's close enough or it over overshoots a little bit it's no big deal but i just thought there'd be a little bit more forceful of a follow-through after this uh that that close to the week i thought they'd really try to put the screws to people i think we even said if they run it up significantly if they run it up another percent or they gap it up, right? You would probably want to be a seller because at that point you'd be into really overstretched, I mean, super overstretched territory on the short-term intraday charts. 
And that I hopefully that helped someone because that was just that was very quick. And then they just really uh, took things the other way, right, for most of the rest of the week, except for maybe Wednesday where there was a hesitation. But look, the bear market downtrend line, let's take a look at what didn't hold. The bear market downtrend line did not hold. The 100, the 150, the 200, all bunched up, did not hold. The 50-day clearly in gold there certainly got smoked. This prior low did not hold. So... Like this was an amazing uh, couple of days there on Thursday and Friday, just in terms of shredding technicals. And now I think we noted that shorties were rolling over a little while ago. They're rolling over. A lot of the longer terms are flattening out and you're below them all now. So just from a quick moving average view, there's not really a lot to like there. If I go over to another graph over here, I'm off screen, so don't worry about it. Uh, just got to get the right one. Not easy to find. So I've got too many running, but I have to. There's, I almost need like another computer with the, just as many charts and I'm that, but it's already a little crazy as it is right now. But bottom line is right that we closed with a lot of our heavy duty intraday charts, very near oversold. The daily, of course, is flashing around a 35 here on RSI. So you're getting there. But remember when you're in a crisis, Right, some of these really strong capitulatory phases. When you when you start to start to see that cascade selling, you're already either near oversold or into oversold territory. So it's not like I'm thinking the same way that I normally would because I don't know what this week will bring. Ryan's putting as much as he can into the market overview. I'm sure he's going to discuss as much as he can tomorrow morning for the Rebel Pit webinar to get started, but. I, I just expect it to be very volatile. Uh, these guys are amazing at creating sque squeezes. You know, I, so I, ex I expect those to be a part of whatever comes forward. But look, the reason I made my comment on cocktail hour that we probably shouldn't just shred through things, but again, you just don't know what the news will be, right? What kind of news will come out by the time the market opens uh, on Monday morning. But there's flat lines right near here. It's not. It's it's not hard to see that there were there were time. I mean, there were areas over here where the market respected this level of about 386 ish, right, which is kind of where it closed. Right. And then if we go down a little bit, you probably can say, well, there seems like there's another support you know, level near, say, 383, 384. In my mind, there is. And I think BMC, Brian McCormick also mentioned that on Cocktail. I think if you go down a little further, right near 381, there's also going to be in that range, right? 380, 381, there's going to be uh, support as well. And then finally, right, if you come all the way down to here, there's also a bunch of candles with opens, highs, closes, lows, the whole, the whole mix right near there as well. So there's a lot of what we would call flatline support on the way down. I'd say for the next, uh, well, 10 bucks, let's just say, to make it easy. So could it shred it and act like it's not even there the way we saw it do this? Sure. I think that's the hard, this is the hard part, right? Because if, if this situation seems to draw out and the market still seems spooked by it, uh, it could deliver that. Uh, on the flip side, I think the way that you combat this is you are super disciplined, right? You you have all your levels ready. You have your orders. You know, you try to have your orders planned, at least in your mind or what you're going to do. And when you get to a level, if you're still a real big bear, then just roll, right? If you're still just roll down, if you're feeling like, wow, things are really bombed out, you know, then maybe what you do is you over roll and you close some, right? Maybe 50, 50, just to throw half, half stay open and uh, that half is rolled, the other half is closed of your position that you hold. But th those kind of things, especially when they get things rip roaring, uh, they can really save you because you don't, it, it could be that you won't have a lot of time to think if things are ex extremely volatile, right? So you've got to really make your moves and not regret it. You're, you, you can always go back and Monday morning quarterback yourself and say, well, I could have made more money if I didn't roll there. But th the point is, right, if you're succeeding, and you're doing very well, 
you're not going to, if you roll and be smart about what you're doing, it, it really minimizes the chance of you snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. And that's the worst thing that the Fed makes an announcement that wasn't expected while you took a quick bathroom break or you went to get yourself a cup of coffee or something like that. That's what you don't want to happen. I even saw someone in the pit say, you know, boy, look what happened to me when I just went to get some coffee. You know, it, it does in, mar in in really fast market conditions. It can mean a lot of money. So the the key is to be disciplined and, you know, be smart about what you're doing and be prepared. Um, but this to me, I mean, I, I would say, look, because everybody always wants a prediction, uh, assuming the news is just murky, kind of the way last week uh, finished out. But remember, the Fed's meeting that day that was scheduled. They're sure they've been working all weekend. We've seen many saves happen over weekends. I don't know if it will on this one. I'm just saying. Uh, but what there's people seem to be ready to make bank runs like regular folks that don't normally pay too much attention. So if that starts to happen, there you know, there could be a social aspect of this that causes even more panic. So who knows, right? Who who knows? That's why I'm expecting volatility of some kind. But I would think that the key level is going to be around this 380 mark, and that's not that far away. You're about a percent and a half. If you wanted to give it a little bit more, you could say that sort of 375 ish. But if you really get battered there. Uh, and below there, then that's a big problem. You know, that that's just technically just a really, really big problem. So what I'm thinking is the bulls will try to maybe turn this into a consolidation. If they can hold it somewhere in here, then they can act, try to say, oh, well, it buys us more time. We, you know, we, they, they managed to hold it up. The Fed band-aid something. I don't know what will happen, but then they'll try to say, well, this is just a consolidation. But I'm thinking that the retracement is getting serious and i think i have that laid out on another chart so let me just see quickly if i where i've got that no i don't have it there it's almost like i lost the retracement number that i had so i had one in place somewhere that's not it either wow too many charts too many charts here is it this one yeah it's this one so unfortunately i'm gonna have to bring well i could maybe just bring this over but uh let's do it this way i'll just shorten it from this low to this high that's the the extent of the bull move that we've seen that's what i'm retracing from so from he, from from this high that started this the where the rally started on those lows on that major reversal day there so with that being the case i think that the 383 level that we stopped very close to 384.32 I'm going to say right around 383 is about the 50% retracement of that whole move up. And then your next level is actually, right, we just talked about these being you know pretty important. The next one is right here. It's 374.93 on the 61.8% retracement. So basically, right, where the price structure is showing you flatline support and resistance pretty much dovetails with your Fibonacci retracements. So there shouldn't be very much disagreement there. Now, what I would do, and I said this recently, I would always be a little bit in front of those levels. If there, if you've got FIB traders and price action traders and everybody basically wanting to react at the same level, you better cheat your way in line in front of them, right? That's the, the mindset. And uh, in the long run, getting the transaction taken care of is a lot more important than getting the last red cent, uh, in, my, in my mind anyway. But this is clearly right we have clearly broken now and if i take just a line i'm going to be just doing real time stuff because we have to i like i said i'll never get these recorded if i if i kept going down the rabbit hole of research to try to include as much as i could to maybe help out this week uh because there's just so many things to i'd say put it right about there just to show that now take that line and move it over but you could see, and I think that what validates that line is the drop below, come back up to it. Now, granted, that candle got way through, but uh, the actual body of the candle is right near the line, and then you fail there. But that is broken. You know, that is that one's broken. If we even drew another line differently and we said, oh, let's anchor it here, you know, that's broken too. So 
things are have cracked and now you could get right depending on how the news hits you could get massive follow through but this does not look good in terms of control we've been chronicling how the bulls were really losing control slowly but surely ever since the highs got put in 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 uh in the market and you know at this point the bulls have fully lost their grasp on control there's nothing i see that tells me the bulls are still in control now remember no one's better that i know of at at head fakes and getting people thinking extremely one way and then reversing things the other and certainly when the feds you know when the feds thumb gets put on the scale it's it's a dramatic difference maker we've seen it many times uh why people have still have faith in them i don't know but that's the way it is uh but when they get involved it can change things and Frankly, uh, to me, there's something really wrong with allowing the public to go out there and buy puts while you're about to, while all your friends know that you're about to rescue uh, the situation. But the general investor out there is utterly uh, locked out of that, uh, those proceedings, right, and those discussions. But that's a whole nother matter. But yeah, I think, I mean, I think barring some really good news, I think this has a little bit more to run to be sure. And I think really, yeah, I think it breaks there. It's bad. Now, remember, the hard the hard part of this is that you'll be very oversold by then. You're already oversold on, say, the 30-minute or very close to it on the SPY. And while we're at it, right, we may as well look at the QQQ and other index ETFs that we check out each week. But you're, you're in bad shape. Let me try to – this is why, like, this – I even call this, like, my, my cleaner view. But you can see just – all the things that you really want to have in place uh, can really get busy when you're when I'm trying to broadcast here. I can make them all out, but I've got to really uh, magnify them for then it looks okay, uh, you know, on for folks to watch the recording. But you can see right here that almost every longer term SMA is gone. The only one left in the queues is is the 100 SMA that dashed white line. Other than that. They've worked it down. Now, this thing's still clean, which is a little bit better, but um, that could be because right that they've had the semis kind of holding out. Now, the semis could catch down, right? I put this in a few UOA Pro ideas this week where eventually the Reaper comes for everything. When there's a real um, route or uh, whatever you want to call it, rug pull, bear market, uh, another leg of a bear market, whatever you want to call it, uh they'll eventually come around for everything because it just they do that's just what happens in the market so even something that's really been hanging in there trying to go like we saw an xli they'll come after this too this still looks better i mean the stall word is obviously uh nvidia right in this sector that's keeping it kept things held together i even was managed to get a a bearish idea in on this thinking that okay well, this is exactly what i just explained it could possibly they start to catch around for it i don't know how well that one went but at least we were able to find something thinking that okay if this really does start to fan out this weakness there's a gap that this could fill and that could be pretty lucrative and that gap's still there the gap fill would be 211.04 so just to, on a side note but that's where things are i mean it's it's almost the same story wherever you go that just slightly different iwm as we said that led things lower you can see that it held the 200 there in purple on thursday let me add a little time for us but then it was over and you can see that's left the channel so this has got to be the saving grace otherwise right you probably start to think some sort of a retest of the lows would be in order there so uh let's find that level let's find where we roughly where that is it's right near 170 so you're not that far away you're three or four percent away there uh that but yeah you know another thing that might be worth mentioning is we've also seen many times where you break a key level and they broke the 200 they broke the support line we had in there they often will find a way to try to come back and see if they can get back into the channel if they can't get back into the channel, then you really can have that next phase of the whoosh lower. But even if we just mouse over the current date, you're at 29 on the RSI. So that's why you're in a, I mean, I think you're already in a dicey situation coming into the week. And we don't even know what the news is because uh, someone said to me, well, what do I do about this? In so many words, they said, what do I do about the situation? Like, 
you're giving me a bearish idea, but you're telling me that it's already oversold, you know, and I'm like, well, what's wrong with that? You know, my attitude was, well, I'm trying to not set you up for this minute. I'm trying to set you up for what could develop in the very near future. And that could mean that you need to see things run from oversold conditions, work their way back up to maybe like the mid 40s. And then if weakness develops again, that could be your cue to then get back in, thinking that you're going to at least test the recent low you saw and maybe ultimately lower lows. So it's it's not, if I pass on ideas, uh, sometimes I have great regret for passing on ideas and setting alerts because by the time I, I'm already working on a, maybe what I think is a good idea, by the time I scramble back when an alert gets hit, I can't always get to them all. But the whole idea is, right, not to have 60 or 70 hits like we do on busy days in UOA Elite, the idea for UOA Pro is to have uh, a few di- new ideas per day. But when the markets are rocking and rolling, you know we're, we're going to put a lot in like we did. But typically, we've been probably getting five new ideas per day this year because it's been, a, I mean, so far, it's been a really good trading year. I think it's been a lot of back and forth opportunities in both directions, different sectors, like the chip, chips, aka the semis heating up at times. Uh, other things, big cap trades at one point, e- ETF trades to the upside and downside. It's been it's been it's been good movement. But here's the Dow, and we were talking about this triangular consolidation, and now you can see what happened there below the 200 day. You know, already at 32 on the RSI, so all, almost there, right? But that even like there's your blue chips, and they look pretty roughed up, but on their way to to me, like it looks like it's going to get roughed up a little more. So if I had to put the old pressure, well, we'll say the gun to the head pressure on myself. I, I would think, look, with uh, you can't. We know that news drove this. We know that news can upend or undo a lot of the ugly looking technicals, and it can happen prior to one, Monday's open. It can happen during the trading week. We just don't. We don't know yet. As far as far as when I began recording, I didn't know. So I would say, in the absence of news, these things go a little bit lower. Right? They'll probably go a little bit lower. They're all probably going to try to go down maybe one more level on a flat line like we're talking. In that case, for the Dow, I'm going to put that, I think, somewhere around this level that I'm mousing over. Just above 315, there seems to be some respect for that level in the past. So that's what I would think happens on that one, maybe a little bit more than a percent lower. Uh, And then that should be a support area. Now, remember, that I'm not trying to equivocate. Everyone wants predictions. I get that. <laughs> but the reality is it could slice right through there if there's even more bad news. So you've got to be, I know a lot of you don't like to watch CNBC and Bloomberg, and I really can't blame you. I, I From what those what those networks used to deliver to what they deliver now, it's, it's an extremely hard listen for me as well. But that you know there there could be breaking news and if you're immersed in something and you don't have any sound prompt audio prompt or anything you may miss that you may wonder well what the heck just happened in these you know i see these one minute charts going bonkers one way or another well you might not know but it's possible also that the fed or someone could make another announcement so i think i would mention that to everybody i know it's painful but keep that news in in full view but as far as control goes on the diamonds, on IWM, on uh, QQQ, because I mentioned it in spiders, the, the bears are in control of everything. Now, remember, the biggest of all the charts that I chart anyway, I don't chart quarterlies. I wish I had the time for quarterlies and the access to it. And, you know, like it used to be something it was easier to get, but the systems I use now, not so much, but... Uh, Bottom line is that uh, the monthly chart even is is showing me that if you look at that big picture, that the the bulls had it and they they were in, ready to potentially do something. They just couldn't muster enough, and you know that that kind of fit with our macro take. You know, and again, I think that's why it's important to have this longer term macro take that doesn't influence you in the short term but always is on the back burner knowing the, the, the you letting you know that remember don't be don't be crazy don't go over your skis as a bull because yet yeah, because we don't know there's there's too many things to be concerned about so 
trade it, sure, but don't go bonkers that way and load up back up the truck until you feel better about not only the charts, but the macro situation. So I think that's always helpful. You just, you need, it's just like an art thing. You just can't let it overwhelm you too much. But that's where, you know, that's where things really are. I think right now where you're looking at situation that uh, is just going to be extremely volatile and you need to, uh, you need to recognize that. Let's see where, if these futures will work for us on lumber. That's something we've looked at. We'll see. These will, they, they did trade. So the that front month contract, I guess, is it's making new lows. I mean, that's what you would expect. Uh, we just, let's take a look at the uh, the copper futures. They probably they probably aren't anything special at this point, but they maybe didn't break down completely. You can see they're on near recent lows. I mean, this kind of all makes a little bit of sense for a change. Uh, let's see about the oil light sweet crude and this this has really been something over the last several months right this consolidation and trying to fish trades out of here but this has been really hard to trade between bull and bear i've i've put some bull and some bear in in this sector and some of them have worked some of them have not fired some of them got started in reverse you know just been a rough area to get really strong movement and kind of like neutralish right now again i don't have much to really say about that uh at the t at this time um the other thing i wanted to note was that some of these etfs that people request are flashing right problems the real estate trust for example this is one that i had in there but we haven't i didn't have enough paper recently uh, or paper to work with to put it in uoa pro but we we did have some before and I think we made some money on maybe this one. We, we did pretty well, I think, on that one, maybe. But yeah, I've been waiting. But you can see this left that uptrending channel. So failed. Here's the phenomena, right? Fall out of the channel, come back, try to get back into the channel, fail, roll over, break break the uptrend. So, you know, that's that's almost like a textbook thing uh, to a degree. So yeah, I mean, you would expect that to come back in and test more. Now, I do think that we have a live trade and it's, I believe we do have a bearish trade in, what was it? Was it HY? Yeah, I think it might be HYG that we had. Uh, this is an area we thought, uh oh, you know, we'll see. But this broke down a little bit. Uh, you can see what happened there last week as well. That's leaving, you know, that's leaving the channel to the downside, but hasn't broken completely yet. This has been an area of support right near here anyway. Uh, on that one, but we've we've included those in there. I tried to get things like XHB. To be honest, I know I wanted to get it in. I don't know if I was able to get it in. I may have, probably just because I looked at even more symbols than usual last week. But look, this is leaving the channel too, or this is leaving the larger channel there, and you're you know you, you can see you're breaking down. So that's threatening to break down as well. And that's something you know. Very often, this stuff doesn't make any sense to me. But that's something to me that may finally starting to make more sense if that's the start of another leg to the downtrend. I just don't see how home builders are going to thrive. Uh, I, I, again, I'm not an industry expert, but I'm just saying I don't know how they thrive in this really terrible environment for housing. I mean, between you know where rates are, where housing prices still are, with the rough job situation starting to show a little bit of problems, uh, you know, some big tech layoffs, even in that space. But yeah, so the VIX did this. I don't even know if that, if that ticks legit, then the ticks legit. I don't, I'm not positive about that, but this finally started coming to life as we noted. So I didn't want to, uh, uh, I didn't want to skip over that, but I think, right. You can see that the, the, the this was a route and are we in the, the tough part now for us is our what what stage are we in of the route? Are we still in the third or fourth inning right now with a lot of game left, or did we see you know more than we would think? Again, without news, I still think you're probably closer to the middle to to, to th the for initial third to the middle of this game. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I don't have a lot of data to work with to say anything very strongly. Uh, it just it is what it is right now. So what I wanted to do, and let me see if I can just show this side by side, just to show everyone as we wrap up what kind of incredible movement is delivered. And remember, this is 
if you follow what we put out on uh, in John and Pete put out online and uh, things like that, you you may want to keep this in mind. You know, if they mention we're seeing sector wide UOA or something in a video they're discussing, you know, that's always something that I welcome that tells me more than just uh more than just one one off hit you know you could still do well with one off hits here and there but it's very powerful in my opinion when you see similar type of UOA sort of relentlessly showing up and that's really what happened in this financials in these banks so uh Schwab being one of them and you get this is what I mean oh they're going to give us this trouble I might have to take us down to three months on this one over here, but I'll just show you a few of these things. This is why I think it pays to pay attention to when things fan out, right? And when the technicals are deteriorating, when the sector doesn't look good, when all these things come together, you can just get amazing movement. So this one bottomed at 57.31, and we 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 still have active, we were still out a week from here. We bought the well, the suggestion was we buy the 17 March 75 puts for a buck fifty-five, but I had to put out additional levels on this one because it became insane, right? I mean, that's just an insane drop. So I, a couple of different additional levels had to go out on that one. But that that thing fell, what, uh, $18 almost through the through the trigger. I mean, just you when you put a trade on, it looks bad. You think there's a possibility that this, that, or the other thing could happen, but you just don't think that, right, that it will happen in the next two days. It just looks good in a way. But you're in my mind for this to happen. I'm thinking a couple of weeks. Maybe there could be a real rough stretch. But that's just the market doing what it does, right? Surprising you, even when you think something, it can happen faster than you expect. Another one was the Blackstone BX, and this one I think we triggered right below 88. And after this paper came in, and uh, we just noted, right, this is part of what we do. And a lot of people don't like the idea that we'll trade off of EOA that's further out in time. They wanted to fit sort of like the ideal box uh, of, hey, it's near term. And somebody came in and paid pennies for these out of the money puts and they turned them into a windfall. Well, that does happen. Uh, I'm not going to say it doesn't, but that is that dream scenario isn't always there. And sometimes you've got to take what you can get. Right. So when this showed up, what mattered to me was more that sector view that I have and also the UOA that was spreading out within that sector and the poor price action of the individual stocks. Plus the fact that banking issues, everyone that's been in the market for any length of time knows some of the biggest routes in market history have really been caused by issues in the financial system. And that's, you know, just me being in this game for such a long time. That's all it really. I shouldn't make it out like it was easy, but I'm just saying like there's a lot of positive things in terms of taking a bearish trade there. And BX dropped all the way to what? Uh, maybe really close to, yeah, like got really close to our final target, a few pennies below there. That's a really big drop too on that one. Again, faster than I even thought. And I didn't like these. I didn't like these charts. Or I, if I liked the charts, I, I would have put an alert in. I would have said, let me see if this, if all these charts reverse low enough. But clearly the charts didn't look good. So it was an easy, these were all easy ads um, for that service. Uh A L L Y Ally. Uh, the trigger here, what do we have on that one? 28 right on the button. And uh this one, you can see that's for ally, that's a pretty good drop, right? You got maybe 10 to 12% drop on that one quickly. And I'm just highlighting a few. Another one that was in this area was the OZK. And I know we already got a lot of reports on these, which is great to see. And that when you're working on this stuff as hard as we do, we really like to see people benefit from the services they subscribe to. It's 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 almost like heartbreaking to Ryan, myself, Greg, when you you put some of these ideas in and you're you're thinking you know boy I, this should be a great opportunity i hope folks really did well on it and then you don't get any reports you're like oh man because you know the whole point of us offering these services is for people to take a look at these on their own and 
hopefully participate and do well from them. You know, that's the whole idea. Uh, but anyway, you can see this even overshot. So really a nice drop from just, just below 42 to 34. And th this is the beauty of, I, I think this is the beauty of these, these situations where, uh, you know, you get these, when you get the quick payoff, a quick windfall like that, man, it's a beautiful thing. It, it you know, it, if it doesn't grind, it, it, it kind of takes the need to be super patient as a trader and makes it easier on you, right? That you don't have to be that super patient trader that waited, 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 and then finally got that descent to work out completely because it just happens so quickly. So now that that's down there, you know, what happens next? We can, we'll have to talk about that another time, but there's just a lot of opportunity. A lot of people are, I see some people on Twitter. I see people in, you know, struggling in different ways, but you know, I know a lot of people lose when the market goes down because so many people are geared up to be bulls by Wall Street and just kind of conditioning. And I mean, I'd rather be a bull too, uh, but there's opportunities on both sides. You just have to be open-minded about it and get your get yourself in place, right? Get yourself in place to participate and benefit from it for yourself and you know for your family. Uh, that means education, right? That means getting experience. It means knowing what you're doing. It means uh, developing the knack for doing trading, which is not an easy thing to develop. It, it means a lot of things, but a lot of people do it. A lot of people seek it out and they learn a lot of stuff and they put their time in and then they 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 get over the hump and the rest is history, as they say. And I just wanted to highlight that, that uh, remember, Options give you that ability to do very well in situations like these that we just saw. And trust me, you know, I could I could literally spend hours covering, reviewing some of these things. We have so many trades that went in, in the index ETFs, like IWM, QQQ, SPY. It just goes on in other financials, other stocks, other ETFs. Uh, it's been really, a, this year, I think overall, it's been really good. But last week was an extraordinary one with that kind of movement in two days. And remember. When you get usually right, they'll they'll find a way to get a trampoline effect. So I'm going to close out by saying the opposite of what I said last week. Uh, last week it was if they move it up strongly or they gap them up, you know that's when you'd be really into heavy duty, overbought territory, really extreme, and you got there. And then look what they did afterwards, right? So if they smash things down early in the week you know, and you see another real route at the very least, right? And you see RSI readings that are just cratered. And you can tell this market is really bombed out. Sure, it could get more bombed out. But what I would at the very least do, I would be in that situation where you're super oversold, I would overroll. Whatever you decide to stay in, in terms of the number of contracts, I would think about it. I can't tell anybody what to do, but I would think about being in something like a 35 Delta but instead of being in something maybe that you were riding and staying in that, and it's a 70, 75, 80 delta put at that point, because you've ridden it at the money or slightly in the money for, for dollars and dollars and dollars. But clearly, right, the bears have taken control. Uh, we could quickly get into very oversold conditions on, with an ugly, ugly opening on Monday morning. So just be ready. Uh, if that doesn't materialize, you know, just gonna you're just gonna have to watch the market. Keep yourself ready to to hear news, right? Don't don't turn off these these entertainers uh, too quickly because they might break news, and that could mean something for you to be able to uh, make some make some adjustments very quickly, as opposed to getting victimized by it. So be ready for that. But bottom line, the the bulls have really ceded control to the bears. Uh, the bears clearly got aggressive and worked with it. Oversold is on the deck. On deck, it's not quite bombed out completely yet. But one more awful day, and you probably are getting very close at the very least. And uh, I don't expect them just to let everything fall apart. Although you just never know with with our so called leaders. Uh, but this is, if anything, this should be I think volatile. I think you should expect volatility and address it through your position management with and triggering with extreme discipline, right? Just do it. Just get, move on to your next stock. Get that done. Get that adjusted. Move on, move on, move on. And by doing that, right, you'll keep locking. If you keeps going down, you'll keep locking in profits. If it 
keeps it goes down for a while and then reverses strongly on you, you on you you'll only get burnt on that final roll and that's the way right that'll give you less of a loss or give back when when they find a way to turn the market if they do but usually after there's been a big cratering maybe another day or two maybe of something that would be big cratering they find a way to produce a tr some sort of a trampoline type rally so just be on guard that's all my best shares there's so many other things really that I left off the table, but to be careful what you wish for pivot uh, because of all this turmoil, that is the uh, thing I wanted to close out with before I just remembered that, it, that they've been, all the bulls have been anticipating and putting the story out that there's going to be a pivot sooner by the Fed and they would at least back off. Well, they might end up getting that because the Fed gets not necessarily soon, but sooner, kind of as the bulls argued, but because of all this turmoil and what it could what it could mean and the fallout from it, right? They could end up in a situation where the Fed does ease up a little bit and ultimately, though, uh, starts cutting rates sooner. And ultimately, that could lead to that that really that uh, trouncing, right? That real awful situation that we showed in terms of you get the worst performance after the Fed starts cutting, because by then you're you're basically on the doorstep of a recession or in a recession and things are rough for a while. And then you finally have to make your way through that and then bottom out, start going back up again. So that in, it could be ironic. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I'm just throwing that out there. Just a thought that I had. We'll see what happens. And uh, I'll thank everyone. I hope you got uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope you got something out of this video this week that can help you out and or maybe in the future. And I'll see everybody in the webinars and updates and all the other stuff we do all week long. So thanks for tuning in again. Everyone stay careful out there. Stay disciplined.